has no friction. Uh, it does have friction in the sense of any time you have a, a door that opens, the hinges have a certain amount of friction. But it has no heavy mechanical systems that break down and wear out and burn up and burn up the bearings and have to be replaced. In other words, it's a solid state solution and it provides the essence of what we need without producing anything that we don't need. And I didn't invent all of this. I simply identified it because other people had already invented most of it. I did invent the envelope for heating and cooling the basic structure. But in the process of going to the beach and doing yoga and opening up to all these revelations, it came to me that these new structures should also float on a liquid foundation that would be hidden below ground. And why is that? That will eliminate all loss of life due to floods, earthquakes, and tidal waves, and natural disasters like that. Because if we build the structure to float, then if the flood comes, it will just rise up and be floating wherever the water ends up. If an earthquake comes, the structure is jacketed in a water jacket and it's protected from the violent forces of the earth jumping around. It's all cushioned by the water jacket. So um, in my quest, I came forward with a paradigm shift. Instead of building houses like this that kill all life, and that will enable you to die in the event of a tidal wave or an earthquake or a hurricane or something like that. In houses like this, you're more than likely you're going to die when this hits and you're in there. In these houses, you at least stand to have a chance. If it's a huge earthquake or a huge tidal wave, you might end up with some broken bones, but you won't be dead because the structure itself is designed to float and to remain upright. So um, the new design is really a panacea. The big problem is it's too good to believe it. Most people just look at it and they go, well, we can't afford it. So, I mean, how silly. What a silly thing to say, we can't afford it. There's nothing that we can't afford. What does that mean, we can't afford it? We print money. We don't earn it, we print it. It's not something you make with your blood and sweat. It's printed like this book, money is. And that's all it takes to have this. And so, to say you can't afford it, this BMW streaming back and forth from Miami with people sitting inside with thousand dollar dresses and suits on and Rolex watches. We can't afford to build a house that protects human life. We send a rocket to the moon, we can't afford to build a house? What kind of talk is this? It's really insane psychobabble to say that we What's can't the cost afford it. comparatively to houses being built currently? If you include the power plant and the sewer plant and all the pollution and the diseases that people have from breathing pollution, what is the cost? Maybe one tenth of one percent of what we're doing now. One tenth of one percent. Uh, what we're doing now is destroying the quality of our own health and all of nature. The cost of that it cannot be calculated. So to ask what the cost of doing it right is really asking the wrong question. Mm -hmm. We can't afford to keep destroying the world. We can't afford to keep building houses that people will burn up in should they catch on fire, that they will drown in should there be a flood, that they will die in should there be an earthquake. We really can't afford to keep doing that. We are human beings. We do have a mind. We can think. We can choose. We have the ability to fight wars and blow up and burn and destroy millions of people and millions of buildings. And we ask, can we afford this? If we can afford war, we can certainly afford to build a safe house. And if you added up the cost of the power plant, the sewer plant, the water plant, the gas plant, 
for a million homes and the cost of the million homes, I could build a million of these for about a third of the price of building a power plant, a gas plant, and all the plants, and run all the pipes and all the wires, and have all the men dying in the trenches digging ditches for pipes. You know, there are men that won't go home this week because they're dying doing hard physical labor, burying pipes to run systems that are killing the earth. So we really can't afford not to do this. And once we decide to do it, it will become the biggest industry that's ever been created on the face of the earth. Because everybody will want to be involved in it. Everybody will want to build one or have one for themselves. And everybody will want to work for the company because it's going to be making so much money because everybody's going to want it. Now, why hasn't it already happened? Well, there is no answer to that. It has not been time, and people didn't know about it. And so you're one of the first few people on the planet that actually has heard that such a thing exists. And once the collective consciousness wants it, it will be as cheap as the Model A Ford. Everybody will have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But still the question is where you get started. Uh, I'm already started. I have 20,000 homes all over the world yeah, and okay. people living in them. They're not destroying the planet. I'd say that's a start. <laughs> and I would also say that the research and effort that I've put into all of this and the patents is a start. And we have a man in Gainesville that's offering to put $70,000 into the company. Well, we need more than that to make the company start. But it starts with one person putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. We have Everett to say he wants to live in one of these. And he may, in fact, cause a number of his followers who are going to follow him no matter what. Mm -hmm. He's found that out. He may, by having a number of his followers want one because he wants one, it might be uh, the thing that could take the place of having a big corporation get behind us right now. Because you see, if if a thousand people signed a piece of paper and gave me a thousand dollars to put in an escrow account and said, we want one of these, and uh, take my money and put it in the escrow, and when they're ready, I'll, I'll, I'll move into it. Just like you buy a patio home in Boynton Beach before it's built, same process, put your money in escrow, somebody has a plan, you look at the plan, okay, I'll take it, here's a thousand. If I had enough people with orders, <clears throat> then there's the money to go to the bank and get all the money that it would take to build factories and produce the houses. So it's like the chicken and the egg thing. Uh, right now, I'm desperate for people who simply know what I'm doing, who can write me a letter and just say, congratulations, I heard your presentation. It's logical. I don't really see any reason why it's not going to work. What can I do? I have a little money to invest, or I have some people that have money. I'll tell them about it. If people who heard about it just did that much, just repeated what it is and talked about it and wrote me and started the conversation, it would happen very fast. It's just that that hadn't started happening yet. There's one human being on this earth out of thousands that have received this information, one has written me back. One person. He's an 80-year-old man at Harvard who's a colleague of Buckminster Fuller. He wrote synergistics with Bucky. He wrote one of Bucky's books with him. He's professor in narrative. He's the only person out of scientists and people, engineers, architects, deans of universities, presidents of universities, they're silent. They haven't written back. Because to write back and say, I understand this, that's the most profound thing you can do, is to actually get it. You to start taking responsibility for the knowledge. Yeah, and to be you're responsible. All knowledgeable. You are all, you Once all you know something, you can't pretend you don't know it anymore.